A clean white beauty look, or we can name it soft fashion look, is one of the most popular style preferred in the advertising world. This kind of beauty look aims to create an effortlessly beautiful, almost flawless appearance which is often sought after in high-end fashion and beauty campaigns. Generally, the goal is to make the subject look their best in a way that feels smooth and natural, avoiding overdone or artificial results. So in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you step by step how to create this soft commercial fashion beauty look. We have so much to talk about, so without further ado, let's dive right into DaVinci Resolve. All right, we are in the color page. Here's my footage. It's a raw shot taken with a red camera. As you can see, it's quite a dark scene. First, we will convert this to the correct color space from the raw menu. Then, we will start the color grading process in the DaVinci White Gamut color space. But before that, I want to apply my pre-designed fixed note tree to this clip. At first glance, I know it looks kind of messy, but the thing is, this is a fixed note tree where I've created separate notes for every potential adjustment. You can easily create a similar one for yourself and use it in your every project to speed up your workflow. But one thing to remember, you don't have to use every note in this note tree. Now let's quickly choose a hero shot. I think this frame looks good. I'm heading to the raw menu at the top left of the primaries panel. We will make a few adjustments here. I'm going to change the red default option to clip, which unlocks all other settings. For color science, I'm selecting IPP2, which stands for Image Processing Pipeline 2. This is Red's latest recommended workflow for getting the best performance out of every pixel. Okay, then I'm gonna select Red White Gamut RGB as the color space and Log 3G10 as the gamma curve. Now we are ready to transform the footage into the desired color space using a color space transform, which is CST, at the clip level. In the raw menu, you will also notice that we can increase the ISO level. I won't miss this opportunity and set the ISO to 1280. Let's continue from here. Okay, I'm going to start with CST nodes. Let's drag and drop it onto a node. Now pay attention to this part because what we did in the raw menu comes into play here. I'm setting the input color space to red white gamut RGB, input gamma to red log 3G10, output color space to DaVinci white gamut, and output gamma to DaVinci intermediate. Then I'm going to the CST node at the end of the pipeline, drag another color space transform into this node. Here I'm setting input color space to DaVinci White Gamut, input gamma to DaVinci Intermediate, output color space to Rex 9 and output gamma to gamma 2.4. And with that, we have successfully transformed our footage. I think this was the most complex part of the process. I promise the rest will be more fun. First, I want to adjust the exposure levels because the image is still too dark. I'm selecting the exposure node in the primaries panel. I'm going to increase the gain slightly, then raise the offset a bit as well. After that, raise the shadows using the lift slider. Finally, I'm going to adjust the gamma level by lowering down a bit. This is before and this is after. Not bad. However, it still feels dark to me, so let's open up the shadows and reduce the highlights a bit. Let's check again. Yeah, this looks much better. Next, I move on to the balance node. The warm tones are dominant right now in our image, so let's try to fix it. I'm going to right click on the node and go to gamma. Then I will select linear. I will set the luminance mixer to zero and with the gain wheel, I'm going to try to find the right point for the white balance. Okay, this is before and this is after. Wow, this is a really great result. We have balanced the image and taken another step towards the clean, polished commercial look that we are aiming for. Let's continue with the curves node. First, I'm enabling editable splines. I'm going to drag the second point that appears after selecting the upper point and extend it upwards. Then I will slightly lower the top point down. Let's do the same for the shadow points. Actually, I don't want to reduce it too much because it affects the image's exposure. This is before and this is after. I think it looks better this way. So far, we can see the change only with these three nodes and the result looks pretty good. Now let's boost the saturation slightly. I'm selecting the saturation node and going to the HDR panel. The global wheel in this panel works very well for saturation. I will increase it a bit. This level looks fine. Checking before and after. It seems ideal for now, as I don't want the colors to pop too much. 
Okay, we are done with our primary adjustments. Next, we are going to use this secondary note. I want to start with the color contrast note to create a slight color separation. This is what I've named it, but you can call it something entirely different. In the primaries panel, I'm going to pull the offset towards the blue region while keeping an eye on the skin tone. Then I will use the gamma wheel to pull the mid tones towards the warm region. This is before and this is after. We have given the image a different look, but it's become slightly cooler. Maybe we can adjust the offset a bit more. Let's check again. Yeah, since there is not a significant change in the skin tone, I would like to proceed this way for now. Okay, I'm selecting the log wheels node and go to the log wheels in the primaries panel. Here I'm going to pull the midtones and highlights towards the yellow orange region. For the shadows, I'm looking at her hair. I think reducing the level of shadows will actually be a good idea. In response, I will slightly increase the midtones. This is before and this is after. I think our image has gained a bit more vibrancy, but the blue tones are still dominant, so I will go back to the color contrast node and tweak gamma a bit more. This version looks so much better now. After the secondaries, we have reached this point. From now on, I will correct the model's skin tone and bring the model forward slightly using windows. But before doing that, I want to apply the only effect we are going to use, the glow effect, because it will slightly change the light levels of the image. I'm selecting the glow node, then drag it from the effects library onto the node. I'm going to lower the shine threshold, increase the spread, and set the composite type to soft light. I'm also reducing saturation so it doesn't affect the colors. Then I will adjust the light levels using the gamma and gain sliders. And finally, I will lower the intensity of the effect using global blend. This is before and this is after. This effect really helps us achieve that glowy beauty look that we are aiming for. Okay, I'm looking at the image. From the beginning, I would say we are progressing pretty well. Let's move on to the adjust nodes. I'm not going to make major changes here, but I will adjust something essential for the beauty look. I'm going to slightly lower the mid-tone detail in the primaries panel. Let's take a closer look. As you can see, increasing this emphasizes all the details on the model's face, while lowering it creates a softer transition. Overall, it's not very noticeable, but it significantly contributes to the final look. Okay, right now I think our image feels slightly oversaturated, so I'm going to select the density node and going to the saturation versus luminance tab in the curves panel. I will slightly raise the highlights and the shadow points here. Let's see the before and after. Yeah, this is much better. Now we can begin working on the skin tone. First, let's switch to the vector scope from the scopes menu. The skin tone should align with this line. I will click on the qualifier menu and select any spot on the model skin. To see what we are selecting, I will click the highlight icon above the viewer. Then I'm going to refine the selection using the hue, saturation and luminance values. Finally, I'm using denoise, clean white and clean black to perfect the selection. To ensure the selection only affects the skin tone, I'm going to create a mask around the model. And then let's track this mask. Okay, tracking is completed. We can close this window and highlight. Let's select a proper frame again. All right, I will use offset to eliminate the yellow undertones in the skin with minimal adjustments to achieve the correct tone. This is before and this is after. I will also lower the contrast slightly and I think I'm going to increase the light levels with the gain slider. We can also add a touch of warmth as well. At this point, I'll make a few small adjustments with offset and gain to get the tone just right. Let's check the difference on the big screen. This is before and this is after. All right, there is a noticeable improvement to the skin tone. There is another node parallel to the skin node. I've created this one to make general adjustments to the skin tone using the color slice panel. Under skin parameters, I'm gonna slightly reduce saturation and density. After these skin tone adjustments, we have reached this point. I think it looks pretty good. Before wrapping up, let's apply denoise to achieve a cleaner image and remove all the chroma noise. I'm selecting the first node and going to the motion effects panel. In the spatial noise reduction menu, I will set the mode to better and radius to medium. Then I will slightly increase the spatial threshold. 
Overdoing denoise can result in some loss of detail. So to avoid a plasticky look, I'm going to decrease the mid-tone detail again. Finally, let's review the image from the beginning. Overall, I think it looks good, but I don't like the dark areas around the edges. We can fix this using window nodes. In the window menu, I'm going to click on gradient, rotate it and move it outside the screen. Then I'm going to increase the gamma level. I will then adjust the spread by controlling the tip of the arrow. Let's apply the same effect to the other side. I will copy it to another node and rotate it. So this is before and this is after. This way we have eliminated the dark areas in these regions. Lastly, I will make minor adjustments to the grade and let's review everything we have done so far. I started with raw adjustments. I used color space transform to convert the image to Rex 09. Then I increased the exposure levels, corrected the white balance with the balance node, brightened the image with curves and raised the saturation. Afterward, I moved to the secondary adjustments. I made detailed changes to the shadows and highlights with log wheels, created color contrast with the CC node and reduced overall color density with the density node. We added a glow effect for a softer look, reduced mid-tone details in the adjust node and worked on the skin tone. Then I increased the light levels in necessary areas using windows and applied noise reduction in the first node for a cleaner image. And this completes our look. Alright guys, we have come to the end of this tutorial. I hope I've shown you a few things that will be useful to you. The fixed node tree might look a bit complicated at first glance, but once you understand its logic, it will make your work much easier and much faster. If you have any questions about this or if something in the tutorial didn't quite make sense, feel free to leave a comment. You can also let me know if you like to see another different kind of look. I will consider making another tutorial about that. Thank you for watching. If you like to support me, you can like the video and subscribe to my channel. I will see you in the next video. Until then, take care.